Oh, we have some hot and dry tomatoes in here this morning. <laughs> I think it's time to turn on the water butt. This system is working an absolute treat, as long as we remember to actually turn it on, of course. <laughs> but we've got the flow regulated really nicely now that it just comes out in this small drip and we can leave it on like for the whole day, basically. And it's perfect. Look at these, all under the mulberry tree, we've got these absolutely beautiful black and white spotted feathers. So obviously a great spotted woodpecker has come a cropper here last night. Aren't those feathers so pretty? Such a shame, they're such beautiful birds. We've got so many woodpeckers around here, the green ones and the black and white and red ones. There's more all the fluff over here. Oh, it's such a shame. No sign of the bird itself though, but possible sighting of the ferocious killer. Hey Lil, she might look all sweetness and light and fluff and joy, but this is no mistaking. She is a wild cat and she is ferocious beast. Absolutely ferocious. Hey Lil. Good morning. The sun is out. Now I know that I normally film uh, in the sun so it doesn't look like we've had that much rain but it has been so constant just gray and rain for what feels like weeks with the odd like sunny afternoon or something but today it's beautiful and actually this was forecast so it's really bright my poor eyeballs are not used to sunshine at the moment <laughs> um but yeah so it actually has forecast that it's going to be sunny this morning and it's actually sunny which seems to be a bit of a miracle at the moment the forecast has been so off but yeah it's marvellous. So we're going to actually try and get some things done this morning, which would be lovely, wouldn't it, Lily? Huh? You have to some breakfast. Oh, she's here for her breakfast. any of that end of last week's vlog I was like right we're gonna do a plot tour that's exactly what we're gonna do starting with a little look in the shed which I'm pleased to say is still in a relatively tidy state okay I've dumped a load of stuff on here this morning <laughs> my handbag if you can call it a handbag and uh, three eggs from the girl A's looking gorgeous but yeah other than uh, obviously my windows need a clean but yeah, it's still looking quite tidy in here look I can actually stand in here and uh, there's space for me which is positive <laughs> apples this is the first of three apple trees we've got on the plot and i've picked masses of these off uh, because they had a lot of damage on them and there was just way too many none of them were ever going to ripen but a lot of them don't really look like they're going to do anything i mean some of them are quite big that one's quite nice these are delicious these apples both of these two trees here this ballerina one as well really really lovely apples but we normally get what maybe two three of them that we rescue from the squirrels every year not a great harvest but then again they are tiny tiny trees hey girlies rescue them from the squirrels and you huh if the girlies get out they just peck anything that's like jumping level <laughs> sorry my shadow under here so dry like you have had so much rain this is right underneath the oak tree and just not only does it not get a lot of rainfall because of the canopy but everything that does get into the soil just gets sucked out again by the roots although the jasmine seems to be loving life under here and so is the akibia conatus going straight up my bit of rope from a chair moving on past my to-do list the potting area i've braced the uh, potting bench at the back there so it's a bit more stable able to support the weight of an enormous wild beast woodpecker killer Hey Lil, that's you, yes. And I've sorted out my pots. Dahlias are out. 
which is a joy. This is one we've had for absolutely years and I totally thought it had been killed off because just in a pot, I thought, you know, the frost would have got it, but it survived. Mulberry tree is looking pretty dandy. We've still got this ongoing issue with it changing sex. So it, always, it used to be a completely female tree, so we've got loads of fruit. So many of these branches produced male flowers early in the year. And then we've just got the odd kind of smaller branch, which is uh, still producing fruit, which is a bit of a pain, really. I mean, mulberry trees do change sex, but yeah, it's a shame. This side, we do actually have quite a few more branches, which is still female, but I don't know how this is gonna progress. I don't know whether it's gonna go completely over and we'll just get no fruit, in which case it's a huge tree. It'd be such a shame for it to go completely male and unproductive. And also mulberries are a joy. And it's one of those things that you just can't buy in the shops. So it's always worth having something like that on the plot. We'll nip into the greenhouse in just a moment, but I just wanted to show you around here where I made that wood store. It's still looking relatively organized. We've got the potatoes stashed around here. So these are the pink fir apples that were grown in pots. Pink fir apple and Kerr's pink lates or main crop. We got the two that we planted last week, which are the swift, which we're hoping to harvest around November time. It's a bit of an experiment. I've actually chucked some shading over the greenhouse with the bubble wrap that we've got in there, but I think that might have been a bit optimistic because we have no sun. <laughs> uh, my tarragon is looking tickety-boo, which is nice, and my goji berry is recovering because it had a bit of a mare earlier in the year. I completely forgot about it, but it's coming back, which is good. The sea kale, the cranby is looking nice in there. Lovely, lovely. Haven't eaten any of this yet, but, you know, it's, <laughs> it's there. And also the marigolds have started flowering, uh, the uh, calendula, which is so late this year. Right, let's have a gander in here. Again, no sun. This really isn't building up enough heat to get things going, to be honest, which is a bit of a shame. This cucumber is enjoying itself, which is nice, although we've got quite a bit of mildew appearing on the leaves, which is a shame. But it's got some fruit. This is a green apple cucumber, but yeah, look, the leaves are in a real bad state, which is a pest. Oh dearie me. Um, we've got melons going on in here. Not a great deal of excitement happening with the melons just yet. These are all Minnesota midget. My sugar baby watermelons all died. And we've got another Minnesota midget on the other side of the door. That one's looking a bit better than the other one actually, to be honest. Chili peppers in here, really stunted by poor compost early in the year, which was a terrible mistake. I really won't be doing that again. I am a silver grow girl all the way now. But some of them, I mean, they're starting, but the plants are just so poor looking. But we have got some goodies on there, look. There are things happening, at least. These are the two grafted aubergines that we got, which are absolute, they're so covered in fruit, they look fantastic, but we've got slug damage on all of them, uh, which is a bit of a pest, really, because I've never had slug damage on aubergines before. Lots of people have said, oh, it could be caterpillars, it could be this, but I've actually like witnessed the slugs on there munching, so I'm pretty certain it's slugs little buggers but yeah covered in flowers we should have masses of aubergines coming our way fairly shortly these leaves are like lace a couple of good looking peppers up here actually these guys weren't in that compost and uh, that just to show how much of a difference it made these guys like same time as the other ones these are looking fantastic we've got some really good sized peppers on here and the plants themselves are about three times the size so yeah, lesson learnt there. This is a lot of stuff I was writing on the board earlier that needs to go out. I've got turnips, beetroot, my chard needs potting up, loads of little baby lettuces that I need to separate out before they become too entangled. More chard, that is peppermint and lucullus, my two faves. I've got uh, green wave mustard and dragon's tongue mustard that both desperately need to go out. They're so thickly sown in those pots, don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Peas are ready, these are the Douce Provence, the ones that can go over winter, and I'm hoping I'll be able to get a late crop from them because they're just so much hardier than other varieties of pea. We've got more Cavalier Nero that needs potting up here, purple sprouting broccoli, Got some more nipper leeks in there. I've got one Caucasian spinach that came up. I'm looking after that one intently, poor little chap. There's a melon here that I haven't got out. He needs to be potted up. We've got some kale that was gifted from George. We've got more beetroot, the chicory. Unfortunately, it uh, got buried under something else and dried out. So I'm gonna have to give that a bit of TLC. Red Russian kale, we've got dill, we've got chervil. We have one tree cabbage i only had like three seeds left and they looked a bit rough so i just sowed all three of them and one of them actually came up so i'm quite pleased about that 
my poor pak choy that has just been yeah devoured by little teeny tiny caterpillars uh, that i've been picking off regularly but you just they are they're so perfectly disguised and so tiny that um yeah it's a real struggle i might have to re-sew that to be honest kohlrabi minestra which is the sprouting broccoli i got from amalfi very excited about that but yeah Overall, basically, I've got masses that I need to plant out. Right, let's go and have a look. First bed in the central drag uh, is the potato bed. So I've got the potatoes that were with Hannah at Hampton Court Flower Show. These ones in these very fancy hessian covered pots. They're looking really good. Um, so I'm very pleased with them. And these are the last of the ones that I've got in the ground. This is nine red duke of yorks so i've just tidied them up earthed them up a bit and they'll stay under the ground until we eat them we've got a whole sack of potatoes at home that we're trying to work our way through at the moment so the dwarf french beans that i sowed what three weeks ago are all in and out they recovered from me pounding them with a rather zealous hosing haven't they girlies they've all stood up girls having a dust bath <laughs> are you all right there girlies you having a nice time chard on the other end of the bed these are my three beautiful um peppermint chards and let me show you so we harvested all the garlic last week and mum has been busy tidying how snaz does it look round this side now we've got the fire pit and the barbecue on top of the barbecue is another peppermint chard this is the one that hannah actually had in her display at hampton court and i've kept it in the pot with her beautiful label because it's dead fancy look at this serinthi i don't know if the blue is being picked up on the camera properly there but it is so pretty it's like proper blue foliage. Oh, it's so lovely. I grew that from seed this year. Definitely doing more of it next year. The dahlia that I thought was dead has recovered on this side. No flowers yet, but it is definitely alive, which is a bonus. Behind the barbecue is our most established asparagus bed. So we've got two asparagus beds. This is the one which has been around the longest. But this year we've stuck some pumpkins in here, actually, because we were given some spares. And we have in here a crown prince, which has gone completely mad. We've got a couple of really good sized. The asparagus itself got really badly hit by the asparagus beetle earlier this year, which just, uh, their larvae strips the leaves. So it's like this, so at this time of year, it's trying to get all of its energy back so that you can pick the asparagus next year. But I'm very pleased to say, it's actually producing some lovely new tufts underneath and we're past the asparagus beetle time. <laughs> what are you doing, Lil? Right there, bottom. Yeah, I am, I am, I am. Pussy cat, pussy cat, pussy cat, poo. So we normally leave this bed completely clear. It is just asparagus, but we kind of plonk some strawberries in here. Obviously we put those pumpkins in, just trying to get a bit more use out of the space. And we also ended up leaving a lot of the self-seeded nasturtiums in here. And we've got some beautiful ones come up. Look at that, that splash, gorgeous little things. So they're really nice. And over on this side, we have got a really deep, dark red one, which is, oh, it's beautiful. Often the dark red ones have really dark leaves, but this one's got like a vibrant, bright leaf and the dark flower, which is a joy. Talking of deeply sexy flowers, uh, the zinnias this year are just so beautiful. I can't tell you. I, I absolutely love them. And the variety that you get in them is amazing. Look at them. Look at all the colours we've got. I had a couple of packets of seed and ended up just mixing them all together and sowing them in one tray. So we've got a right riot of a mix. And look at those beautiful, oh, they're just so gorgeous. <laughs> Beans are finally sort of starting to take off up over the arches, which is good. This first arch has got the uh, Greek gigantes on them, which are a bean we use for drying. They're like a really fat, gnarly uh, runner bean, but the beans inside are huge, like a big fat butter bean. They've got these beautiful, cream yellow flowers really really nice plant so we just leave all of these on there we don't harvest them at all and just let them go paper dry and then we'll pick them all off in one fell swoop at the end parsley at the bottom here flat leaf and curly and because we had such terrible germination with the beans early on in the year i've used the arch like doubled up so i've also got my chocha growing up this arch on both sides. It's a mixture of the two achochas. I've got a Bolivian giant and this one, 
which is the classic that I've been growing for years, which is from Yorkshire. I mean, obviously, originally it's not from Yorkshire. <laughs> now, something that is doing brilliantly well this year are the brassicas, apart from my tree cabbage. And this is why I have tried to sow some more. I've got one of them, luckily, but it just looks so sad. I've got one Brussels sprout that's looking fantastic, though, so that's a bonus. <laughs> No danger of getting sick of Brussels sprouts this year because, yeah, the one plant is not going to do us very many. I do have masses of kalettes in here, though, and I've got some cabbages on the end. These are planted really quite close together, and normally our brassicas are pretty stunted because we've got so much club root in the soil, but they are doing amazingly well in here, and so I probably could have planted them a little bit further apart, but hey-ho. My kalettes are looking so strong. There's a little bit of white fly in here. You can see it just fluffing around as I'm moving these leaves about but look at that look at that rib down the center of that leaf is that not so pretty it's like proper pink no cabbage white caterpillars spotted in there yet but I'm keeping my eyes open because this netting is really mainly for birds rather than butterflies so they can sneak through oh the misery of the French bean situation they've just been abysmal this year a couple of them have just started to take off, which is encouraging. So we might get something out of them. But yeah, it has not been a good year for French beans for me. Three sowings and uh, just, yeah, poor. But look, there's something happening. <laughs> there's one. Nearly. Nearly. Such a struggle. I mean, it's been a case of poor germination and slug damage. And yeah, then the birds snapped a load of them off. It's been, it's been a saga with the French beans this year. Which is a shame because we are normally inundated with French beans and because of that I've got quite good at freezing them for winter, you know, I've got, because we've had so many of them over the years, it's something I'm pretty good at, but I just don't think we're going to have enough to even freeze this year, which is a shame. The newer asparagus bed we started picking from this this year, first time, this is also producing a load of new growth, which is encouraging. More beautiful zinnias, look at this white one here, and the, the buds as well, with that black rim, oh they're just so beautiful, they are so beautiful and so varied. And look at this one, I mean they're like birds of paradise, kind of parrots with all these bits sticking out of them and mini flowers in the centre and oh they're just lovely. What lovely things they are. There is also a gladioli coming up in the middle of this bed, <laughs> which is, uh, mum's very excited about this, by the way, very excited on the gladioli front. I think that's the only one we have for the year. Arch 2 is Bellotti's. These have also really started to take off in the last couple of weeks, which is encouraging. Another bean that we use predominantly for drying. Very, very pretty speckled pods and the beans themselves inside are speckled too, and they're just a fantastic bean. Again, we'll leave these to go dry on the arch, won't touch them until they're paper dry and then we'll just harvest the whole lot in one go. Like with the Greek Gigantes, had space on this arch, so we stuck the tromboncinos in here. These are a good size at the moment. I tried them really large last year and just didn't like them, so I'm picking them all small this year. But look at the size of the flowers on these things. Like, they're obviously a classic cucurbit type flower, you know, like a big yellow trumpet, but they're just whoppingly huge. And their coils are so tight, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Great plants. I really, really love these. If you pick the fruit young, it's like a really dense courgette, but with no seedy centre. They are really good. And there is also a cucumber under here. I thought I'd planted three tromboncinos, but it turns out one of them was a cucumber. <laughs> Chives coming along at the bottom here. Onto the first of the courgette beds. It's really interesting. Everything on this side of the plot is doing really well this year, much better than the other side. My single surviving nine star broccoli, very, very pleased with that. The other four died. Um, I thought we might get something from them, but we didn't, but this one has survived beautifully. So at least we've got one and hopefully I'll be able to take some cuttings from that. All is not lost on the nine star front. I've got two uh, Fasalis here, Cape Gooseberries. It's been years since I've eaten Cape Gooseberries. So that is pretty jolly and these, are my whopping courgette plants. You'll see the difference between these ones and the ones in the bed on the other side. Planted the same day, exactly the same varieties. I've got a white one in here, which is the one that I picked up when we were in Amalfi. When I say white, they're just a very, very pale green, but they're beautiful little things, absolutely gorgeous. 
yeah, it's got these really like flat leaves compared to compared to another Italian variety that we've got next door to it, which is just a uh, basic straight green courgette. But it's got these really cutaway leaves. We've got loads of them coming in here. Bennington's green tint patty pans are going really nicely. We've had quite a few of this plant already. Delicious. And then the third courgette that we're growing is a Italian striped variety, striata, again with the really cutaway leaves and they are coming along nicely too, but they're great. They're like a ridged, stripy one. They're a great courgette. Marigolds are loving it on this side. They're looking fantastic. These are all self-seeded from last year. You can see how many there are in here. And we've got a couple of verbena that just kind of found their way in here. Beautiful little chaps. Got some dandy looking lettuces in here. Some Lucullus chard just dotted around in here. The, a couple of them have been got by the birds, but generally because of the pumpkins and the beans and everything, they're quite covered here. So I'm hoping I'm not going to need to net them. And then we've still got the leeks in here from last year. I'm saving the seed from them. So the flowers are still looking beautiful. You know, allium flowers are amazing. They just go and go and go. And the bees and the hoverflies absolutely love them. And I mean, these have been flowering for at least two months. They're just beautiful. What a joy to behold. Even if you don't end up collecting the seed from them, it's worth letting them go to flower. We've got the runner beans on this arch. It's a variation on the classic Scarlet Emperor. It's called Scarlet Empire this year. First time I've grown this variety of bean, but we've definitely got some coming, which is exciting times because I absolutely love runner beans. Actually, we've got a couple ready to pick on here, which is exciting. Load of rocket under here. It's obviously gone to flower, but my goodness, we had so much rocket this year. We've just got bags and bags and bags of it in the fridge. So we've been, <laughs> been a bit slack on the eating front. Little line of radishes coming up under the beans on this side. Although this is a bit weird. The ground is absolutely strewn with uh, runner bean flowers that have just been nipped off. So somebody's been on the attack, little bastards. The pumpkin patch this year has gone mental. We have had a couple of really poor years on the pumpkin front. But these guys look unbelievable. They've just gone wild. I mean, they're taking over the next bed as well. They're climbing up along the fence. But yeah, in here, we have got three different pumpkins. We've got we've got Ichikokuri, which is a bright orange onion squash. We've got Marina de Chogia, which is a big dark green gnarly chap. And we've also got another crown prince like we have down in the asparagus bed. So yeah, I don't think we're going to be short pumpkins this year, chaps. Another dahlia that survived the winter, the big freeze. I'm so pleased this one survived. It's called Happy Single and it's just a joy. One of my absolute faves. I love the colour of it with the dark foliage. I love it. Again, things going nuts on this side of the plot. The grapevine has gone like a wild hairdo sticking out the side of the fruit cage. And the raspberries, it has been years since I've seen this many fruit on the raspberry cans. I mean, these ones are sticking out of the fruit cage, so we probably won't get much off them. <laughs> But the ones that are inside are also absolutely covered in fruit. In fact, I may have beaten a squirrel to this one. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> Mum on the hydration mission. All right, let's get in here. Not only are they covered in fruit, but they are so much taller than they have been for years as well. I mean, these are head height, which is what they should be. And they just haven't been for ages. Gooseberries needing a haircut. We got some quite good fruit off them this year. I'm going to be a bit more diligent in my pruning this year. So hopefully we get even more. The strawberries in the lovely hanging pots are doing really well. Remembering to water them this year, which is a good one. We got some more fruit coming up there, which is a joy. A couple of stray runner beans on the side here. The red currant and the black currant both survived when I thought they'd been killed off in the 40 degree heat last year. And we've actually been donated another black currant. So we got a little bubba one starting on that side, which is lovely. Another donation was this loganberry, which has taken really well. It's looking fantastic. So I'm gonna try and train it up so that it goes up and around the top of the cage. That looks like a beauty. Well, it tastes like a raspberry initially, but the back taste is totally different. It's like, um, it tastes like a loganberry, I guess. Oh, it's delicious. I'll tell you what, just while I was crouching there, I've noticed that we've got loads and loads of uh, nasturtium seedlings all in here. 
but I've just seen one because you know I'm saying they're all self-seeded so they're all just an absolute mass of different ones that we've grown over the year well this one's beautiful look at this one so it has got absolutely gorgeous variegated leaves look at that but then look at the flower what can I get in there look at that it's like a dark rusty orange color absolutely gorgeous it starts off really really red and then sort of goes oh it's lovely what a love but yeah look tons and tons of nasturtium seedlings all over the show in here poor old Berta is still in need of a bit of a makeover actually the birds have been nesting in her abdomen <laughs> yeah Poor Alberta. Apricot tree needs a prune. We ended up getting about, what, seven or eight apricots off that this year, which is way more than I thought because the blossom got got by the frost. So I was very happy with that. The fig tree is going great guns. And I just spotted another one in here this morning. Where is it? As I was coming in the door, I saw another ripe one. Can I see it though? Oh yeah, there it is. Can you see him through there? come around the outside <laughs> there it is look at that a beauty i'll be eating that later i suspect now this is quite interesting i'm not going to get too close because well you'll see why in a minute but we had a little tiny hole out here in the path that was about that big and there were wasps going in and out of it so we knew there was a wasp nest under there however overnight a badger's got in we're assuming it's a badger i don't know what else could have dug it out quite like that but and I'm just being a bit cautious because they're all over the floor. But the wasp's nest has been dug out and have a look at what it looks like now. Yeah, there is bits of the nest all over the pathway, which is dangerous that like you're walking past. And the uh, wasps are obviously trying to salvage whatever they can from them. Some of the bits of nest have still got larvae, like pupae in them. But yeah, that is quite a wild hole to have opened up overnight. The badgers have definitely been around here. And the poor wasps are going wild, absolutely wild. I'm not going to get close. If I could really get in there, I'd show you. There's a beautiful ball, like a huge, like a beach ball sized ball of perfect, like hexagon honeycomb type look in their wasp's nest. Absolutely beautiful. Obviously, it's not honeycomb. <laughs> it's not bees. But yeah, it's that kind of, uh, it's just lovely. It's absolutely beautiful, but guarded by raging angry wasps at the moment. Yeah, so unsurprisingly, we're avoiding the front of the allotment at the moment because they are not happy. They are very angry wasps up there. Yes, can't blame them really. Anyway, let's carry on. Winter savoury in flower, looking gorgeous. Fairly underrated herb, this one, I think. It's ever so good for cooking down with beans because it helps with beans' effect on the gut. <laughs> it makes them much less uh, potent, shall we say. So right up the top, bed number one is currently being used as storage, but this is where I want to plant my peas because it's shaded. And I think if we do get any heat this summer, they'll be better off in this bed. Leaf mold bin has just been put to bed now and we will dig that out in the autumn. And compost bin number one on the three bin system is filling up nicely at the moment. Every time we put something in here, the magpies come down and throw it all out again. But <laughs> there is a Jerusalem artichoke growing out of the middle of that compost heap. Horseradish has recovered in its bucket over there. That really dried out. The, this is where the Jerusalem artichokes are supposed to be <laughs> in this bed. They're looking really nice, really tall, really healthy. Budley is out. I mean, it's no surprise they're called butterfly bushes. It? It's like that one last week, just up the way on the path. It was just absolutely covered in them. They're gorgeous. Are they not absolutely gorgeous? Look at that. That is so beautiful. I know buddleias are hated by a lot of people, but just having one to attract all of these butterflies, I just totally think it's worth it. <laughs> as long as you cut them down every year and they re-sprout, they don't get too out of hand. I love it anyway. Beautiful. Beautiful. Carrot and coriander. Most of the coriander has been chopped out of here now because it went to seed, so we've got to sow some more. The carrots are coming on all right. Looks a bit messy with the stumps of the coriander, but yeah, some good foliage in there. And on this side, mum sowed some more, but I think she said the seed was a bit old and we haven't had great germination on that, which is a bit of a shame. So I'm gonna have to re-sow. 
Rhubarb survived its move, I'm happy to say. Butterfly is still enjoying itself on there. <laughs> Just going around every single flower. There's another chap visiting here. Got some really good uh, foxglove seed heads in here. These are the foxgloves which were about seven foot tall this year and there's loads of seed in there. So I'm gonna hoik these off and scatter them across the edges of the plot later this year. Self-sown ones just seem to do so much better than whenever we've tried to buy them. So talking of self-seeded, I'm gonna get scattering these fairly shortly. They are rattling away nicely. That is the big oriental poppies. Pear tree. We've now only got one pear on here. Uh, we had two, but the other one was found on the floor half chewed the other day. So that is a bit of a shame. It was there. <laughs> that is the site that I'd been watching, but sadly. I'm very pleased to say another one of the dahlias that survived the winter, this chap. This was in the big dahlia bed along with the happy single on the other side. And yeah, I thought they were all dead. Bit of it survived, which is good. Something that is not quite so pleasing. Um, we have had very sad times with the chickpeas. You know, when I planted these out and I was well excited. We do, however, have a flower. <laughs> but I would say half of these have died off and another third of them are looking very sad. But you know, if I could just get, just get a couple of chickpeas, I mean, I would be happy. That's all I want. No, nothing in this bed is doing particularly well though. These are the courgettes I planted same day um, same size plants as the ones in the other bed. I mean, they've got courgettes on them, but the, the whole plants themselves are just nowhere near as vigorous. You know, the other bed, they've planted the same spacing and everything, and the other bed is just like they're tumbling over the outside and they're like a metre and a half tall. These ones are just a bit subdued. So I think there might be something going on in this bed. Something that doesn't seem to be suffering are the, tom the outdoor tomatoes. They're looking so strong. They look phenomenal. But I mean, having one day out of 10 with a bit of sunshine, they're just never gonna ripen. And there's some stunning tomatoes in here. I mean, look at these beauties. They are gorgeous. I'm just really sad that they're gonna get got by blight because it's so damp and mild weather. Like, it's perfect blight weather. And if we don't get any sun, like today, it's just a bit of an anomaly. Um, they're just never gonna ripen, are they? which is which would be so sad <laughs> it would be so sad because they're looking fantastic look at those look at those just oh they're gorgeous absolutely gorgeous beautiful big trusses ah oh, come on sunshine come on we're in the last few days of july i'm hoping it was a july thing and august is going to be hot but these plants are just so strong they are fantastic looking plants now you just wait to see the contrast between those and the ones in the polytunnel. <clears throat> chard, peppermint chard. These have recovered. These are the ones that I planted out looking beautiful and then didn't cover and the birds went crazy for them. But look at that, the beautiful stems. How, how can anybody, I mean, even if you don't like eating chard, which I think classifies you as a mad person, um, <laughs> uh, how can you just, oh, they're just so beautiful. How can you not love a chard plant? I think I might have to start Chard Lovers Anonymous, seriously. Lettuces coming along nicely. Uh, two neat rows. I seem to have planted an anomalous one in the middle of the red leaf stuff, but you know that happens. This is a less than successful bit of the bed. These are my Eleanor Express broad beans. A um, couple of things went wrong with them. Firstly, I sowed them and left them in their tiny pots too long. So they were really, really struggling. They were stressed plants by the time I got them out. And then they've ended up with terrible rust and then we had the really hot, dry weather, so they didn't get enough water, and then it became cold and damp and miserable, so they didn't reflower. So generally, all in all, not a success. We do have a couple of beans on them, which we'll take off, but I think I'm gonna whip them out this week. Got some very fine looking radicchio in this end of the bed, which I'm so looking forward to. I tell you what, these, when they get really, really hard centered, just chopped in half, under the grill with a load of Taleggio cheese on top and balsamic vinegar, and just like burn the tops of them. Oh, 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 oh. Beetroot also coming along quite well. We've got a lot of beet leaf miner on these, been eating out the inside of the leaves, but the plants themselves look all right. The kohlrabi is looking fantastic. Got a couple of whoppers on here. I'm gonna have to pick some of these this week, which is very exciting. Spring onions, I've been sort of slowly pulling them out as they're getting big. 
gorgeous chaps. I normally always grow Lilia, which is the red one, but I didn't have any seed for that earlier this year. So I've got a whole selection of white ones. But sorry, just going back to that kohlrabi, I love it. <laughs> Pond area is looking a little bit barren at the moment. Mum had a huge like weeding session in and around. And so we've got a bit of bare soil around there, but it will recover. But I tell you what, we found a fish in here the other day. And I wonder if you can, I can still see it, right? We didn't think we had any fish in here and we've got an absolute whopper. Look at the size of it. Can you see him? I don't know if my head's in the way here. Um, it's the shadow of my head in the way. Anyway, yes, there we go. Fish. I mean, that's about four inches long. It's huge. Water lily's looking lovely. The mare's tail in there is looking great. So much life in here. It's an absolute joy having, this, having a pond. Think the wing, you think the swing seat is a time waster staring into the pond holy schmoly hours can go past the big lecanthemums on the edge in full flower looking beautiful just keep deadheading them really and they'll go for the rest of the summer which is a bit of a joy a mini zinnia so cute we've got crocosmia coming on the side here sweet peas are being a bit of a struggle this year I'm really not keeping up with either picking the flowers or if I'm not picking the flowers, picking the seed pods off afterwards. And obviously the moment that you do that with sweet peas, they just get very sad and tired. So I'm going to have to rejuvenate these. Hopefully they'll come back. Goldenrod is about to flower. Hot lips is looking good. Another thing I thought I'd lost in the frost, but it's come back really nicely. Still got a couple of poppies on the go, although it is mostly seed heads now. So I'm going to leave all of these to self seed back into this bed. So hopefully we'll have as good a display as we had this year because boy, did it look beautiful. Honeysuckle is smelling unbelievable on the back there. The wind comes kind of from that side. So it blows the scent across the allotment, which is lovely. Garlic chives, fennel and caraway in the end here. And then I've got protected under here. Can I do this without lifting the box? Yes. Um, what are they? white sprouting broccoli i remember now george gave them to me thank you very much george they got got by caterpillars so i've had to cover them up and then there is the nipper leeks under there which are coming along really nicely they are the miniature leeks so they'll be picked when they're sort of pencil size absolute complete and utter fail on the sweet corn front i'll talk to you about that in a minute we've also got three leftover red cabbages in here which aren't really doing anything but the girlies quite enjoy them so i've just been kind of ripping bits of leaf off for them so that's all they're doing but the sweet corn i'm not kidding what a fail all of these ones at this end that are just tiny and already flowering um were the ones that i bought in a tray from the garden center and they'd obviously got stressed moment i put them in um they just started flowering so what should be about six seven foot tall is only a foot great <laughs> the ones that are still looking all right at the other end are actually the ones that i sewed from seed myself a bit later and they look okay cavalinero this is the cavalinero we have been picking and eating at the moment so it's looking really nice really healthy i've got some more of that to pot up actually in the greenhouse as well to keep us thoroughly supplied in cavalinero because it is a staple celeriac these are looking surprisingly good. They're really starting to knot up under the ground as well. So yeah, I've got high hopes for a bit of celeriac this year. Really have. Peas are over, but I haven't taken them out because they're providing a bit of protection for what's underneath the cage. So I've left them in <laughs> looking dry and dusty. This bed needs to be totally cleared. We've got a load of self-seeded um, tree spinach at the end there, California poppies all over it. And these bits of chicory, which I'm just experimenting to see if they're gonna come back or not. A mono cabbage in here, which is also just being held on for the girlies. We've got radishes and the parsnips. These are the gladiator for the parsnip competition that was being run by Potty Mouth. Everybody got their parsnips in an awful lot earlier than mine. I don't know what I was doing. The two little herb beds outside the polytunnel need a massive chop back. Right, let me show you the tomatoes in the polytunnel. So, do you remember the whopping thick stems of the ones up there? Well, have a look at these chaps. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. In comparison, they've just been living in this environment where they've not been touched by the wind and the rain and they're just weedy. In com like in comparison to what's outside, they're producing some excellent tomatoes but their actual body growth is um, just so much poorer than the stuff that's had to really battle with the elements outside. But we have got some good ones in here, look. <laughs> we got some nearly ripe ones in here, which is incredibly exciting. If ever we get some good solid sunshine, 
we might have a good year for tomatoes ahead of us. Come on, August. Come on, August. This is a um, Japanese black trafelli coming along at the bottom there, a really big fat one. We've got some black tomatoes. That colour is beautiful. Some fat boys in here. More fat boys in here. <laughs> we got some absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, massive tomatoes coming along in here. If we get some sunshine, I think we're in for a treat. I really do. There's just so many coming. Beauties. I love it when even at this stage, and they're all green, they're all different shades of green, different shapes, different sizes. I just, I just love a tomato. Just love a tomato. The peppers and chilies and things which I've sown in here were also stunted by the poor compost at the beginning of the year. They are just starting to recover now, I would say. A lot of Thai basil mixed in with it in here, but look, we do have some pretty snaz looking fruit on there, which is good. <laughs> but yeah, the poor things, I mean, they were potted up into not great compost and they did not change size for three months. They just stayed they just completely stunted they just stayed the same size nothing happened and yeah I wasn't fast enough to realize that it was a compost issue so hopefully it's not going to completely do us for a crop this year and we will get something hopefully parsley's looking fab in here though it's amazing how different the plants are isn't it amazing right only a couple more beds to go <laughs> lavender's looking gorge outside the girlie's house the tree spinach. <laughs> I mean, we've got tree spinach all over the plot, but it's something about self-seeded. It happens with chard as well. Like if you let them self-seed, um, the self-seeded ones are always infinitely stronger than the ones that you diligently plant out. Mum is being intensely watched under there in case she finds a wormy. <laughs> but yeah, these, these are the ones which I grew from seed and, and, and very carefully planted them all out and everything. And they're just like, they are half the size in terms of like their actual bulk than the self-seeded ones. That's just how it goes. A couple of lettuces in here and also the aubergine experiment. We, we've stuck a load of them outside because we had so many aubergines this year that we didn't realise were going to actually survive. It looked like they were all gone. But something that is loving the weather is the sorrel. The sorrel is very much appreciating the rain, which is good for you girlies, isn't it? Because you love that sorrel. Yes. And that chaps. <laughs> It's a very, very long plot tour. We just got so much going on at the moment. Um, yeah, that is where we stand at the very end of July. We're in a good place. Like if we do get the sunshine, I think we're going to be flying. It's just a case of waiting for it, I suppose. And the whole of the rest of Europe is burning in terrible, terrible heat. And we're just sitting here in sort of a dull gray fog, which admittedly is, is definitely better than the burning heat. Don't get me wrong. But you know, still. <laughs> anyway, chaps, bit of picking, and then home for a glass of wine, I think.
get goodies, we're gonna head home. I'm starving. And uh, yeah, the sunshine's just going in, so we got the best of it. Cheers, chaps. Cheers. Also, I apologise for naked face. <laughs> um, yeah, so, got the plot tour done. That was all really good. Then we had, like, days and days of rain. So I just had to keep nipping up there to kind of check on things. And obviously, Mum was going up there a lot to check on the girlies. And then yesterday, I got up there and cut scene. Hello. Wasn't uh, planning on doing any filming. We've just had a bit of a break in the rain. Um, it's been really windy and really like quite heavy rain and so I just nipped up here to check on things because we had a couple of tomatoes that were looking so close. <laughs> anyway, I've just walked in to the polytunnel and look what's happened. I got two tomatoes, three tomatoes just like lying on the ground and you know I was worried about whether my string was going to break or not this year. Well, it turns out my wire has snapped. So I hold my uh, tomato canes up with wire that's suspended off the beams at the top and my one which was like that on the other side um, it's obviously been so windy that this the equivalent of this one has been moving around a lot and it snapped the wire so yeah I thought I was only going to be up here for a couple of seconds but I've got to fix that luckily I don't think either of those tomatoes are uh, snapped they've just like brrr, collapsed over so I'm going to try and fix that get some more wire get them back upright. Quite impressive the string hasn't broken even though there's been doom gloom disaster though. <laughs> I don't have the drill with me though so I wonder I have to do it manually. A manual screwdriver who've heard of such a thing? <laughs> okay actually it's quite good I don't think any of the tomatoes have broken off either because there's one in the middle there which has got some right fatties on it so fingers crossed I'll be able to get that up without snapping. I uh, don't have a camera stand with me or anything so I'm just going to see if I can sort that out and then I will show you progress at the end. Only a couple of casualties and I'm going to eat that one. Mm. And they're all back up and there's no damage. Nobody snapped, they just folded over. So that is a big relief. The screw isn't all the way in. Um, I don't have a ratchet screwdriver with me. You know, one where you don't have to let go. And there's only me up here. And I need somebody to take the weight of the tomatoes for me to really screw it in. But it's pinned back enough that it's safe until uh, mom's here so she can 
hold it up for me while I plug it in. Plug it in? There's no plugs up here, Jesse. Uh, while I screw it in properly. But yeah, I'm quite pleased. So it's, let me show you those really big tomatoes. Yeah, so other than those two casualties, uh, one green, one red, look, we've got these absolute stunners in here. Stripy beautifulnesses. I would have been so sad if they had come off. Talking of good tomatoes though, we've got a couple of reddies over here. We've got one garnet. Now, garnet is the uh, tomato that I grow every single year and think it's an absolute gem. It's a cherry, but it's like a meaty flavored cherry. You know, like things like sun gold, which are just amazing. It's just like a burst of sugar in your mouth, really gorgeous. But sometimes it's just a bit too only sweet flavor, you know? And sometimes cherries can be a bit like that, like watery, but sweet. Really is blowing a blooming half a branch has just landed on top of the polytunnel. <laughs> um, yeah, it could be really, really sweet. Whereas the garnet, I find, have got more of like you know, like a beef tomato, but really super condensed flavour. Oh, they're just such a good tomato. And there's one ready, so I'm a happy bunny rabbit. Anyway, yeah, I didn't even come up here to do that. But tomatoes rescued, so all is right with the world. <laughs> yeah. So that was annoying, um, but luckily no damage. Anyway, this is an incredibly long video, chaps. So I'm gonna say <laughs> huge cheers to everybody. Cheers to the Monday Clubbers. As always, you're spectacular and cheers to everybody else. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I hope for those of you are, who are in the hot, 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 you've got cool, cool, cool coming your way. And for those of us in the cool, 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 we've got the hot, not that hot, a bit of hot, tiny bit of hot, just a smidgen of hot would be nice. Cheers, chaps. Sweet. Hasn't had any sun. <laughs>